I'm Larry Walther. This is principlesofaccounting.com, chapter 22. And in this module, we are continuing our consideration of variance analysis. This time, we're going to look at the overhead variances. Now, recall that overhead has both variable and fixed components. As a result, variance analysis for overhead is split between variances related to variable overhead and variances related to fixed overhead. Remember when more is spent on actual variable factory overhead than is applied based on the standard application rate? The result is called underapplied overhead and it produces unfavorable variances. When less is spent than is applied, the balance represents overapplied overhead or favorable variances. Differences are transferred to variances accounts as they were for material and labor. And we're going to look first at variable overhead. This illustration shows how we're spending money for overhead on wages, indirect material in other words, supplies, and so forth. As we credit those accounts, and you've seen this in a prior chapter, we're debiting the factory overhead account to capture actual cost in an overhead account. Then we apply that overhead to production, we credit factory overhead, and we debit work in process for the standard amount of variable overhead, we would debit the unfavorable variance account. This is if it's an unfavorable variance, that is, we've spent more than we anticipated under standard. Notice in the middle, the factory overhead account should be zeroed out at the end of the period. That is, we should have charged to overhead all of the amount in the factory overhead account. If we turn this around and look at a slide for favorable variances, you can see in the middle we've applied at standard more than we've accumulated at actual. So the ZZ, the variance in this case, we're going to need to close that out by crediting a favorable variance account. That's the total picture for variable overhead, but it can be divided into spending components and it can be divided into efficiency components, just as we did for material and labor. So a variable overhead spending variance would be a variance that reflects the difference between actual variable overhead and standard variable overhead associated with the actual units of the application base. And the overhead efficiency variance is a variance that reflects the level of efficiency associated with the application of the variable overhead to production. And so we're going to return to blue rail manufacturing. This again is the illustration used in the book. And remember that it was estimated that variable factory overhead should be equal to $10 per direct labor hour. That's the model, that's the standard that we set, $10 per labor hour. During August, $105,000 was actually spent on variable overhead items. And so our 3,400 units of output, we expected three hours per unit. So our standard hours to achieve the output was 10,200 hours. That's our application base for overhead at $10 an hour. Means our standard cost for variable overhead was 102,000, but we spent 105,000. And so we have 3,000 of unfavorable variants to deal with. Let's look closer at these variances using a graphic. In this graphic, we can see that we have 3,000 of unfavorable variants. If we break this down, however, we get an entirely different picture. We actually have a $20,000 variable overhead spending variance that's favorable in nature. And we have a $23,000 unfavorable variable overhead efficiency variance. In the case of the overhead spending variance, we actually spent $105,000. But if we look at the application base of hours, we had 12,500 hours at a standard rate of $10. For that number of hours, we would have spent 125,000. So we get a variable overhead spending variance of 20,000 that's favorable. But that compares poorly to the 102,000 that should have been spent, the standard cost, as compared to that same 125,000. This is recorded with a journal entry. Here we're going to debit work in process for the 102,000 standard cost. We're going to credit the 105,000 to close out the actual amount in factory overhead and the differences get applied to our overhead efficiency and spending variances. Again, debit unfavorable and credit favorable. The variable overhead efficiency variance may reflect efficiencies or inefficiencies experienced with the base used to apply overhead. In our example, the number of hours was run up because of inexperienced labor. Let's next turn our attention to the fixed overhead variances. The actual fixed factory overhead oftentimes shows little deviation from budget. The reason being that many fixed costs are truly fixed. They're set by contract or some other agreement. But there can be variations and we can divide the analysis of those variations into a fixed overhead volume variance which compares the budgeted fixed overhead to the fixed overhead that is applied to production based on standard fixed overhead per unit and fixed overhead spending that compares actual fixed overhead to the budgeted amount of fixed overhead. 
And so let's reflect on Blue Rail one last time. Blue Rail had budgeted total fixed overhead of 72,000, but only 70,000 was spent. So that's positive. But when we look at this closer, Blue Rail had planned to produce 4,000 systems. Therefore, the planned fixed overhead was $18 per rail. That is the 72,000 that we thought we would spend divided by the 4,000 units. The fixed overhead allocation rate, therefore, is $6 per hour, $18 per unit, divided by three labor hours per unit. And so when we look at this graphically, we spent $70,000. The standard cost, however, that we would apply would be the 10,200 standard hours for the production that we achieved times the $6 per hour standard application rate for fixed overhead would be $61,200. So that yields an $8,800 difference or unfavorable variance that we need to divide further. As it turns out, we had a $2,000 favorable spending variance. That is, we spent $70,000 when $72,000 was the budgeted amount. But we really got shot out of the saddle here on the fixed overhead volume variance. We didn't produce the 4,000 units we anticipated. We only produced 3,400 units. And so when it came to applying the fixed overhead to production, we produced a very unfavorable volume variance. You know, we didn't spend as much as we thought, but then we certainly didn't produce nearly as much as we thought. So by the time we get through with the total analysis, we've got 8,800 of unfavorable overall fixed overhead variances. And here's the entry for that. We're going to charge work in process for the standard amount associated with production we produced. We'll credit factory overhead to clear out the 70,000 in that account. And the differences are applied to our volume variance and our overhead spending variance. And so all of this information is incorporated in the ledger. Management has to assess it very carefully to determine its cause and effects and what remedial actions are necessary. If you look at other books, you may see a two-variance method, a three-variance method, a four-variance method. There's many thoughts and ideas about the best way to analyze variances related to overhead. I've elected to use a four-variance method. Portions of these can be combined to come up with the two-variance method, for example. And any of that, what's important to see is that just like you analyze your efficiency related to labor and materials, you would do the same thing with respect to your overhead. And with regard to the level of spending, you would do the same analysis. Uh, you would apply the same sort of thought processes to overhead that you do to labor and materials.